Well, you guys, today we'll take a look at 10 things to consider when buying an external drive like one of these here. Now, I've got some other ones we're going to be taking a look at as well. But 10 of the most common things you're going to be need to looking out for is the storage capacity, size of the drive, drive connectivity, what your budget is and how much they cost, SSD versus HD, transfer speeds of your data, durability, portability, security, and whether you want it for gaming or whatever you want to use your drive for. So let's take a look at this one here. This one's the Oracle uh, portable uh, drive here. You can see this one has 40 Gbps uh, transfer speeds, which means it's going to be super fast. This one is the uh, 512 gigabyte version, which gives you 512 gigabytes of storage. They do other versions as well larger storage, shorter storage, and also slower speeds as well, depending on what you're actually looking for in a drive. But if you're looking for something that's super fast and it gives you a fair bit of storage, you can go for something looking like this. Comes with a user manual inside here, and you're going to get all your cables. This is your fast uh, data transfer cable here, which gives you the 40 GPPS uh, speeds. And uh, again, you will need to check the connectivity of your device to make sure it's capable of running these cables. If you don't have this Type-C connector and you only have USB uh, 3.0, then you're not going to get those speeds with that sort of cable or that connectivity. Now, this is the device here. It looks really nice. I do like the look of this, and I think the design on this is pretty cool. Again, we've got this nice uh, aluminium on the side here with Orico logo and there is the input here where we can put our cable in which will give us that super fast transfer speeds as long as your device you're plugging it into supports those speeds so just bear that in mind so I'm just going to plug this cable in and we'll take a look at the speed of this a little bit later on and I'll give this a quick test just to show you the sort of speeds you can expect from this sort of device now, like I said before, they also do some other versions available, which is the smaller, slower version. Uh, still 512 gigabytes, but it's a 20 Gbps uh, types of speeds with this particular device as well. So they vary in speeds and sizes. So check their website out. I'll leave the link in the video description. If you're going for something like this rugged NVMe M.2 SSD enclosure, this is going to allow you to build your own external uh, drive. So this comes with no terabytes in it which means there's no storage in here but they do a one terabyte and a two terabyte version so check their website out for those but this one is just the enclosure itself this comes with a nice aluminium case here and a nice anti-shock rubber around the outside of it so if you drop it it's not going to damage the actual drive inside and again i don't know how durable this is because i haven't tested it yet but it's held down with these six screws here, which means you'd have to undo these screws to get access to inside. And it does have that type C connector here. Now, as for transfer data speeds of these particular devices, I've got tons of these lying around, which I've used and I've been sent and I've tested some of them. Some of them are better than others. This one comes with a little nice uh, cable that's connected as a little uh, holder. And again, you can just plug this in. The cable is a bit short, so bear that in mind. It's not a long cable but you can use your own cables if you wish. So these are generally pretty fast uh, devices. They're portable, and this one's hard and rugged, so it's got that durability to it as well. Probably got a bit of waterproof uh, capabilities on this one as well, by the looks of it. And again, we do have that nice cooling in here with this big blue thermal pad that's going to go on top of the actual uh, drive that you put in here. Comes with screws and a little screwdriver as well. So it's not going to be quick access because it is a screwed down device, which means once it's in there, it's pretty much going to be in there until you use a screwdriver to remove the actual drive itself. And it's going to be sitting in here and you can screw it down. It does take slightly different sizes here, as you can see. So that is uh, this external drive. I'm going to get this uh, installed in a second. But let me just show you other types you can use. Oracle make uh, some external ones as well. And again, these are going to be varied in speed depending on what types of drives you put in them. Some external devices are going to support Gen 4. Some of them are only going to support Gen 3. And some are only going to support even just normal SATA ones. So just bear that in mind when you're looking for these particular types of drives. So you've got one which has already come with the storage in it. And then you've got these ones which you can put in your own drives depending on 
the type of speed you're looking for will determine how much you're going to pay as well. And this is where the cost comes in because some of these are pretty expensive when it comes to the super fast versions. So I'm going to quickly put this thermal pad on top. This is the Kingston KC2500 I've got in here. And the speeds that you would get on these if you plugged it into a computer would be 3,500 reads to 2,900 writes. And you're definitely not going to get that with this particular device. Some of these controllers in these devices are not the best and you will not get those sort of speeds like some people claim on their websites. So bear that in mind, you just have to take this with a bit of pinch of salt. I'll show you the speeds of this in a second with this particular drive here. And there's the company name there if you are interested in any of their products. I'll leave the links in the video description. Now let's take a look at Dock Case. Now Dock Case have sent this over. This is a 2.5 inch SATA portable enclosure and it does have on-screen display. It's in beta at the moment. It's on the one of their Kickstarters. Again, eight terabytes SSD or five terabytes hard drive can be installed into this uh, drive and this will give you plenty of storage. And again, it does have quite a few nice features on here. Maximum speed of this is going to be 550 by 560 Mbps for particular types of SSDs. That's a general sort of speed. Get your cable and you get your uh, actual device. It's compatible with all versions of Windows, Mac OS and Linux. The controller chip in this is the Viatech VL716. And the auxiliary power supply USB uh, C port on the here supports a maximum power supply of 5 volts and 3.0 amps, uh, which can be connected to a USB a USB uh, C port on your PC. Made of aluminium, as you can see here, very nice design, glass front with uh, on-screen display. Now, according to their Kickstart website, it does say triple data loss protection with 10 seconds of PLP and also the health status display on screen display as 15 watts of type C uh, auxiliary power supply and also USB 3.2 Gen 2 uh, SATA 3 6 GBPS and 8 terabyte capacity, which of course you'd have to install yourself. Now I'm just going to be putting in a cheap SSD here just for testing. I'm not going to be doing too much with this device, but basically you can see the capacitor in there, that little purple thing, that's your capacitor. And I'm just going to put this little drive in here just to show you. And again, this is just a cheap drive. You want to put a better one in than what we've got here. Uh, you just need this little tiny felt thing here. It comes with this uh, felt protectors here. And one of them is just like a square thing that will just stick down the side, stop the drive moving. And you've got these other ones that will go on top as well to keep it nice and snug in there. So that just pushes inside here like so. And then you can just use the other ones on top and then put the cover on and then use the device for backing up data and things like that. And you do have that little bit of protection. I've not tested it fully yet because it is still in beta, but I may have another look at this uh, a little bit later on down the line to see how good it is uh, with data loss and things like that. So let's just take that cover off and we'll put some power on it so you can actually see it with this on-screen display. There's your inputs here and there is that uh, 5 volt uh, 3.0 amps on there. So let's have a look at getting this set up so you can see what it looks like on screen display. I'm just going to put this little protective cover around it. This is the other dock case uh, protection that they had here and you can apparently drop this. So this is one of those uh, durability things that you can put this in and it will give it a bit more durability in case you dropped it. Uh, so a little bit more security with your data in case you dropped it. It's not going to damage uh, your drive and it's not going to lose all your data so it's definitely worth considering if that is one of your requirements so that is the, uh, the actual device there in 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 all its glory with its little orange case here around here and again i'll power this up so you can see what the on-screen display looks like it just basically fires up here and then you can see that five second plp ready and it will count down and it's building that up up the top you see that green bar it's not recognized this disc uh, because it's a Chinese disc. And uh, but you can see here, it tells you basically the, the speeds and it also tells you the status and it will give you the MBR partition on here as well. It tells you other information. So it's quite a nice little on-screen display there. I like that. And I think this is the way uh, forward for a lot of these devices nowadays. This is probably the way they're going. So let me just quickly show you this one here. We're going to do a quick speed test on 
this 40 Gbps, and we'll see what the sort of speeds we can get uh, with this sort of device, which comes with the storage of 512 gigabytes straight out of the box. And they do other versions on their website as well. So if you need more storage, then check those out. I'm not sure what they go up to on their website, but this one is the 512 gigabyte version. So I'm expecting pretty fast speeds from this device because it does uh, state and claim that it can go pretty fast. So let's go ahead and you can already see you're getting read speeds of in excess of 3000 and write speeds of 1605 up the top there. So pretty uh, fast uh, device here for transferring data. So if you're transferring data over, you're going to get those super fast data transfer speeds and it's portable and it has a nice cool design on there. So you're getting that sort of a nice look as well to it. And this comes with the cable and the actual device as well and your storage in here. I'll leave the links in a video description for this. Let's go ahead and try this one out here. Now, depending on how good this controller is now, I've used a lot of these in the past. Some of them have been pretty good and some of them have not been as fast as they've, as they've claimed on their website, but we'll give it a go. And there's the speeds right there. Now this Kingston KC 2500 is capable of 3,500 reads and 2,900 writes, and we're not getting anywhere near that. So when you're picking one of these external drives, just make sure you're getting the right one at the right price that suits you because budget is important because some of these external devices, and I've got loads more than this, uh, some of them are pretty expensive, so bear that in mind. And depending on what your connectivity is on your computer and the cable that you're using will determine the sort of speeds that you're getting and the controllers that they put inside these devices will determine also what sort of speeds you're getting uh, with these devices now these sort of devices are geared up for your data protection and again you're using an ssd in this so it's going to restrict your speeds down to around about the 500 ish sort of uh, mbs which is going to be for your reads and writes both of them are going to be around about the 500 odd mark if you're looking for more security then you can use something like these uh, these do come in different sizes bigger larger storage devices and these are obviously uh, data and encryption protection on here. So if security is a big thing for you, then you can use something like this with some sort of uh, encryption and data protection on them. And they do come in a larger size on these ones as well, but they are pretty expensive. So bear that in mind. Portability with the USB flash drives, you really shouldn't be using these to store data on, uh, but they're great for portability. Try and get the fastest ones possible, 150 MBS, that's your speeds. So pretty decent speeds for a USB flash drive. They've got metal casings on them. They come in different shapes and sizes. And also they are very portable. But like I said, you really shouldn't be uh, sort of storing your data on these uh, long term. They're great for security reasons as well. You can create a secure access on these ones with their software. Or you can even create a container on here, which is uh, with uh, Veracrypt or something like that as well so if you're going down this route you shouldn't be storing like lots of large data on these for long periods in my personal opinion it's okay if you've got other backups in other locations and you want to use this as another source of backup they are pretty cheap and that's probably why a lot of people do use them as backup and uh, i use them basically as a bootable flash drives and things like that i don't really store data on them but i'm pretty sure there's a lot of people out there that do and let me know in the comment section below whether you use these sort of devices for storage now the other option is the good old mechanical uh, drives these come in different sizes two and a half inch or three and a half inch they're mechanical drives but they come with large storage capacity they're pretty affordable even these little ones here these ultra fast uh, my passports they're portable they're up to three terabytes and they don't need any power source because they can run on the computer power Whereas these big things here, they do need a power brick to power them, but the capacity on these is pretty high. You know, 16 terabytes and things like that on this one is about 14 terabytes. So if you're looking for super large amounts of storage and something like this will be obviously the answer. They're not very portable, as you can see the big ones. The small one is pretty portable and uh, you get three terabytes of storage on there. So depending on what your budget is, uh, and how much storage capacity you need. They're not the fastest in the world because they are mechanical, so bear that in mind. They're nowhere near as fast as your SSD and your NVMe drives, but again, uh, cheap capacity. And for gamers out there, 
you know, people still use mechanical drives. They're still going to be around for quite a while yet uh, until the prices come down on SSDs. Anyway, that is going to be about it for this video. Uh, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. That's 10 things to consider when you're buying an external drive. And I uh, hope this video has been some sort of use to you. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who are joined my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. And a special shout out goes to Celtic Lad, Edward Kelly, RTX Brody, Gary Capic, PC Repair Tech, Vitality, Phil's Computer Repair, Big Daddy, Gary Belts, Mike Bigness, Jedi Buddhist, Geo Sam, Welsh Study One, and Albert Hewson. I really do appreciate the support, guys, and I shall catch you on the Discord server. If you haven't joined yet, the link is in the video description. Check there and click on that link, and it will take you to our Discord server. You will need to download and install Discord unless you want to run it on your browser. But other than that, I shall catch you in the very next video. Bye for now.